Hello, everyone. My name is Shah. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Village Core. Um, you can find this recording as well as the recordings for all the other events that we have on our YouTube channel, as well as our website, villagecore.org. And today we have Shireen and Stan here to talk to us about uh, real estate. So um, Shireen, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Hi, Shu. Thank you for having us today. Uh, I'm Shireen Alipana. I'm uh, uh, one of the board members with Village Core and also um, uh, filled the position as a chief marketing officer. And I'm also a real estate consultant. So that's why we are here to talk about, to um, talk about basically some of the options around um, real estate uh, for seniors. What are the things that they need to think about uh, when they're buying or selling a house? buying versus renting and all the other options so we can educate our community a little bit better and then provide resources and places to go to if they have any more questions. All right, and Stan, can you tell us a little, about, a little bit about yourself as well? Absolutely. I'm just getting started in this business uh, from 1983 till now, you know, so it's been 40 years doing this. Oh, and wow. uh, I really enjoy dealing with seniors and one of my favorite clients of all time, I'm going to share the story with you, was many years ago, and he was a uh, pastor, I believe. He was 73 years old, and he was buying the parish, and they were, and he was so excited, and he was like a 20-year-old buying, you know, his first home, so excited, and, and one of the funniest statements was, he said, you know, the best thing about this whole process is you have enough trust and faith in me that you give me a 30 year fixed rate loan. I didn't know I'd live that long. So he was really excited about that. It, uh, but he was just so much fun to deal with. And it's, it doesn't matter at what point you purchase. It's a fun process. Uh, and we're excited to help anybody involved in the process. So I have been doing it 40 years now and uh, here to help any way that I can. All right. So the first question I have is, if you are a senior looking to buy a home, what factors matter the most? Hmm. All right, I, I will take that and uh, Stan, please jump in uh, if, if you have uh, other and more thoughts. So I think one of the important thing when, um, when you're senior and looking to buy a house is location. So the proximity to the healthcare options, to the hospitals, the clinic, the proximity, how close it is to your uh, to their loved ones, their, the people that they can actually pick up the phone and call in case if they need anything. Uh, weather is a bit big uh, consideration, uh, whether you like to live like the, in, a, in a hot, humid weather or like cool in four season type of environment. And what are, the, what are the cost of living? So that's going to be a very important one too, because when we get to that uh, phase of our lives, uh, we have set amount of income. So that's very big consideration to see um, what's the house, house is going to cost like, what are the living expenses, what are the healthcare expenses, and also what are the processes with the home buying or home selling processes around that area that we are looking for, around that city that we are looking for. So there are a couple of things that needs to be considered. And then the other one that I want to point out is the safety, right? That the safety of the area that they want to live in, because most of the seniors, if they're purchasing a home, they are living by themselves or um, they, they need to be in a safe area where they can take care of uh, everything on their own. So that's that's what I think. And Stan, do you want to add anything else to that? I just think one of the communities that you might take a look at are 55 plus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. in the 55 plus communities, you get more bang for your buck and, uh, and so certain amenities and 55 plus communities can be a whole range of different services. They could be on golf courses, they can have big rec centers, there's lots of activity or just more, maybe it's a manufactured home park that's more economical and more limited on the amenities, but it's all 55 plus. And so sometimes you can get a better value in those markets at 55 plus. Yeah, and there are some uh, fees, right? Uh, especially if you get into those communities and especially they are gated or they have uh, homeowners association fees or knowing what the fees are involved, like what does HOA cover or what are the other fees on top of HOA? Again, that goes back to cost of living. So all of those things that need to be considered, especially uh, if you're moving to new area or new um, new city. 
Oh, wow, that's great to know. And then also when selling your house as a senior, uh, what factors are crucial? Um, so when it comes to selling, it's uh, obviously this is one of the uh, their life's biggest investments, right? Um, so considering a process from A to Z and knowing um, who you partner up with, who you work with, who you trust, and also understanding the process, what's going to happen, what to expect, especially in this market, in this day and age, uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a volatile market, right? So when you start and um, you have this the, these um, buyers first of all let's just kind of walk through the process when you meet the person that you want to work with and partner up and then that means you're going to list your property so it's going to be available on the internet that the address is going to be visible so those are the things that uh, we need to educate the the senior citizens and clients because they need to understand that's going to happen and then the second phase of that is um, when people actually come in and they want to see the house, what are the options and what are the things that we can help the homeowners be confident and be safe about it? Sometimes it, uh, it's basically is that hey, agent or the realtor that they are working with, they need to be present there with them to make sure this process goes well, the showing, the viewing goes well. Sometimes they would like to hold open houses on the weekends. What does that mean is that the owners, homeowners cannot be in the house when you're holding the open house. And some folks may not want to do that or may not have the option to leave the property. So understanding this process A to Z again in detail is very crucial. And also understanding what is gonna happen after, let's say they have a, uh, a buyer who's interested and willing to purchase the property, what the process is, how long it's gonna take, what is the, the deposit, how it's going to be handled. And at the end of the day, what is the net proceed that they're going to get in their bank account? So that's going to be the most important because obviously, again, in this phase of life, they have planned for this, their biggest investment of their life. So they need to understand exactly what it's going to be like, how much it's going to be, and when they're going to get access to that. Stan, you want to Sure. If I can add to that, depending on the marketplace that you're in, uh, I think an important consideration is what's your tax portability. So your property taxes, for example, can you take your tax base from where you're at now, move it into another one? What are potential capital gains that you may be looking at? So having somebody on your team working with an accountant, somebody's going to help guide you because Sharon and I are definitely not tax accountants and somebody that you know and trust that will help you in that decision because that may decide how you want to impact it. And one of the things with the interest rates, you know, they bumped up obviously in the last uh, year or so. What some people are looking to do is say, hey, maybe I don't want to take a large capital gain at one point. If they're in that situation, they may be able to sell their property if it's free and clear. They may elect to sell it with financing, offering seller financing. Because if it's a new uh, borrower is going to pay six and a half to seven, depending on the type of program they have, well, maybe you as a seller say, hey, wait a minute, if I sell my property and put this money into a bank, they're going to probably pay me a half, 1%, 2%, you know, type of deal. I could earn more money and have a steady monthly income coming in, potentially selling my house and having uh, a fixed income coming in for three to five years. Typically, they'll balloon it at the end of three to five years. That is another potential. So when you go to sell your property, look at carrying seller financing and having that income coming in instead of maybe cashing out. And the reason I bring that up from a tax perspective is the way it works on any type of capital gains is it's the amount of money that you receive. So if you sell it and you're not receiving it, it's how much you receive in any given year. If that makes sense. So it uh, you can avoid some of that and stretch it out till maybe a period in time in which it's more beneficial for you to receive all your funds at one time. So there's different options. And what it is, it's it, the one thing about selling real estate is Shuring can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. You need your title expert, your escrow people, your real estate people, your mortgage people, your accountants, all that. And that's where Shuring can you know help you put together a great team to facilitate any of that. Got it. So should senior citizens buy or rent? Oh, this is uh, this is my favorite topic. 
because it comes out comes up a lot and there are pros and cons with both of them right so um, let's talk about buying. So the pros, let's talk about pros and when you buy a property. You obviously start building equity uh, by paying down the mortgage. There are no incre unexpected increases in rent, as we know it's been happening, especially in this market. And also, uh, they can start customizing their living environment, right? Whether they need easily accessible kitchen or they need single story and all of that, so they can customize the house to the way they want. Now, what are the cons? So they are obviously the home, they're homeowners. So homeowners comes with other costs, such as like property taxes, just uh, Stan just mentioned. There's homeowners insurance. There are all kinds of repairs that might be required in the house. And also um, they are set. I don't know if, if this is a pro or con, but they are basically, they have less mobility, limited mobility because you buy it and it's buying and selling the house quickly and uh, turn it around quickly. It's not that um, that open basically, right? And also um, talking about, let's talk about rent right now. So the, again, with the rent, there are pros and cons as well. So with the, one of the pros, again, going back to having more flexibility, let's say if um, this folks, kids, they wanna move to a different city. If they are renting, then they can actually move to the same city that their kids are moving to. So. Mm -hmm provides a little more flexibility. And also there are no additional expenses, right? So they all they are responsible for is the rent amount that they pay on a monthly basis. Now, the cons obviously is every year we have to think about rent increase and that happens, especially living in California and Southern California, that's just a standard and normal thing that happens every year. And then they have less um, uh, options to to do anything around the property that they're living. So there are not a lot of repair options unless you agree, get agreement and approval from the landlord. If there are any things that need to be adjusted and modified, it's a little less, it is basically limited and it requires a lot of approval and making sure that landlord is gonna be okay with it before they can go continue doing that. So there are pros and cons on both. So what I wanna do my job is really to educate um, um, our clients or whoever they reach out to us as a resource and provide all the information because everybody's situation is different. And based on this unique situation and the personalities, the lifestyle and everything that people are looking for, one of these options will fit their lifestyle better. If I could jump in, and I'm going to be, I'll admit, I'm a little biased in this situation. So <laughs> when you're renting, you're paying a 100% interest rate. Yep. So even with the higher rates today, let's say you get a 7% loan, you're cutting your interest cost by 93% over renting. Now, here's the other thing. You're almost guaranteed your rent cost will go up. And now, granted, in California and various areas that you're at, you have limits how much they can increase. And uh, sometimes it's 10%, sometimes it could be whatever. We're on the mortgage side, because we've kind of reached a little bit of a high point that we have for uh, a number of years now, prior to COVID, that rate was down about four, four and a half percent. So just as likely that rents will go up, there's a likelihood that the interest rates will drop. And so your ability to refinance down the road and actually lower your payment, the percentages are much higher that that's going to occur versus a rental rate actually dropping. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little biased in that situation. And you also, you know, you're building equity. And if you look at homeowners across the country or, or individuals, those with the greatest wealth have built that, you know, for the average person anyway, is through equity in their home. That's right. And so that's where owning a piece of the American pie, so to speak, uh, helps build that equity and it leaves you something down the line to deal with, leads to errors, whatever. Uh, but it's, I always believe, is buying. And then people ask, well, is now a good time to buy? What if the uh, values, you know, they've turned about, well, the market's going to crash. You're going to be able to pick up a much better deal. Those people have been waiting for the last year to that happen are still waiting. And the problem is we're not anticipating that that's going to happen. And the reason for that is right now there's a tremendous shortage of inventory out there. And so, and the reason for that shortage of inventory is some of the people that took advantage and refinanced and over the last few years are sitting on two and a half or 3% loans or even lower. They said, why do I want to buy a house and go out and pay 7%? Okay. So those people aren't putting the homes on the market, but there's people who have 
whatever needs. They need to buy a house or they want to buy a house. Maybe they're relocating to the area or they're having kids or whatever circumstances. They need to buy a house. So now you've got people fighting over that limited inventory. And so that's having an increase in the price of homes. But let's say now the rates drop. Okay. Now what's going to happen is we have a lot of pent-up demand. People who really want to buy a house but are sitting on the fence waiting for the rates to drop so that they can take advantage of a new home with a little bit lower payment or lower rate. So now all of a sudden, there's a lot more buyers in the market. So we're not really expecting this crash that you know, some feared a year or two ago to actually happen. So if you look historically, even if you bought a home in San Diego in 2004 and you went through the, you know, the crash when it did in 2008, but you held on and you never sold it, you're exponentially higher than you were in 2008. So real estate is always your best investment and it doesn't matter what age point you're at. Sorry, I'm a little biased when it comes to buying a house. <laughs> no, I couldn't agree more. I, I I absolutely love the points that you just brought up. Yeah. Yes, and then uh, what loan programs do seniors have for real estate? Okay, I'll take the lead on this one, Sharon, if you don't mind. Please so, do. I was just going to say, toss it over to Stan. So they, uh, there are so many different options today. So you can, if you're having to be a veteran by chance, you can get in with no money down. And VA is actually one of the best ways to purchase. Let's say you have limited amount of money and maybe you've got some credit challenges. And let's face it, we've all had credit challenges at some point or most of us anyway. You can go like with an FHA loan. That requires only a minimum of three and a half percent down. Although there are some down payment assistance programs that are out there. Uh, conventional is the way that most people go, especially if they have at least 20% to put down. Seniors or anybody 62 and older have a distinct advantage. Let's say you're going to sell a property and purchase another one, and you're sitting with significant equity in your home. You can do a, uh, it's called a HECM loan. It used to be called a reverse mortgage. And you can actually purchase a home, never have a payment the rest of your life. Okay. So depending on your age, uh, the younger you are, the more equity or down payment that's required. The older that you are, the less down payment. That's because they're, you know, they're looking at the actuariums and that and seeing, okay, uh, making a decision on, okay, how much equity can we sit on here? So let's say you're 62, you purchase a home today, and let's say you put like 55% down or something like that. You can purchase a home, zero money on uh pocket after your initial purchase, meaning on a monthly basis, that interest is getting tacked on. So let's say you buy a million dollar home, you borrow 400,000, you start out at 400,000. You're not required to make a payment. You still have to make your tax and insurance, but you don't have to make a payment to the lender. So that month, if you don't, you can if you wish, but if you don't, that monthly payment gets added on or the interest cost. And it's never due until you either pass away or you move out of the property for an extended period of time because they're designed based on a home equity or about an owner-occupied uh, individual. And the advantage of this is uh, unique because you can live in that house for 30 years and never make a payment. But let's say you do that and you borrowed 400,000, you paid a million, but let's say the market turns. Now the home is worth 600,000 and you owe 700000 on the house. What happens? Okay. So on a typical mortgage or whatever, or let's say it's part of an estate, they would have to pay off the current loan balance no matter what the value of the home is. That's not the case on a reverse mortgage. It's basically uh, whatever is owed on, whatever you uh, have on the property. So if you sell it for a million dollars and you owe 700000 you or your heirs will net the 300,000, okay? But let's say now the properties were 600 and you owe 700,000. What happens is there's no negative, no recourse. It's called a non-recourse loan, meaning they can't come out after you for the $100,000 out of pocket. It took that lender to sell the property. They can't come back after you or your estate for any difference. Now, there's also more advantages. Someone in your family can actually purchase the property. Let's say one of your kids want to buy the house. You owe 700 and it's worth 600. They can buy it at 95% of the current appraised value, regardless of the loan amount. So the family actually gets a discount 
on purchasing that property, okay? But it's a loan like every other loan out there. You don't give up title. You just don't have to make a payment. But if you want to make a payment, you can. You can also use it where, okay, we're going to put money down and we're going to set up a line of credit on your home. And you can do this with the home you live in and not have to purchase, okay? And what I mean by that is maybe you don't need to borrow 400000 Maybe you want, you're going to borrow 400 now, but you want an extra 100000 available on a line of credit. You don't get charged interest on what you don't draw until the point that you actually pull it out and said, okay, send me $50,000. Then you start getting charged interest on that money. But again, you don't have any payments. And what's different about a reverse mortgage is that line of credit builds every year regardless of the value of your home. And they cannot take away that line of credit from you. So what happened back in 2008 when the market collapsed and everybody had a home equity loans, then right away the bank started cutting you off. You no longer had access to that line of credit. You may have never missed a payment, never used it, but they're looking in the market and say, okay, we're going to cut that off. On the reverse, your line of credit available to you grows every year, depending on how you set it up. No matter what happens with the value, you have that money available to you to pull down. So reverse is a really good way to go for people that just want to control their cash flow. The other thing, and I'm sorry I'm taking a minute on this topic, but there's many things that people don't think about. So now you want to buy a home, but you're retired. You're drawing off Social Security. Maybe it's paying a very little each month. You say, okay, now I'm not going to qualify income-wise to be able to make that payment. But you have significant money in, let's say, IRA accounts, okay, or some type of investment but you don't want to draw that money and put all that money down. What we can do is we can figure out, uh, okay, what do you want to buy? And I just had a case about a year ago with somebody doing that. They retired, they had money in uh, the retirement account. So what we did is said, okay, what do you want to buy? Then we go back and figure out, okay, in order to purchase this property, let's say it's $7,000 a month income you need and you're collecting 2,000 on social security. So we need to set it up so your retirement account is paying you $5,000 a month, okay? We can do that. So they talk to their plan administrator and they say, okay, now we're going to start dispersing this amount of money every month and now you qualify. That makes sense. So we can use money sitting in your assets that aren't paying out to you today, but we can use that for qualifying. And you can always go back and change it after the fact. But there's many options available for seniors uh, in using IRA funds and so forth to help in qualifying. So you could do a reverse, you could do a forward mortgage, use those funds to help give you sufficient income to qualify for the payment that lenders want. Sorry, it took an extra minute, but there's a lot to talk about and a lot of good opp opportunities for seniors when it comes to the mortgage side of things. Thank you for that. It's some really helpful information. I had no idea about those, <laughs> so thank you. Yep. And then uh, how can you as a senior get started in real estate decisions? Um, so I think it's just, again, understanding the process, your the purpose, the the what you're really looking for, the lifestyle, the why, why you want to buy or sell, uh, where do you want to live, and then what's going to happen from the day you either start listing your home to sell or you're starting your buying journey exactly what's going to happen. So education is a big thing. Understanding the process is a big thing. And also working with people that you trust and you're aligned with. Like there are so many great professionals here in San Diego, on um, mortgage side, on the real estate side, but it's all about personal connection and everybody's personality is a little different. So it's very important to see who you connect with, who you trust and who can represent you better uh, and make sure that you basically achieve exactly what you're looking for. Uh, and then the other thing is if if they are looking to make the move to a uh, more of a senior community, 55 plus, just like Stan mentioned too, there's a list of them that we can provide. And then we can actually add them to our uh, website and, and the link to all of them. So everybody can check it out basically. But they're starting from like a version Del Sor all the way to like Fallbrook. There's an Eastridge community. And then there's um, Costa Serena and uh, tw uh, Twin Homes that they can actually look into there's oak north in rancho bernardo oceana community in oceanside there's so many communities that 
uh, are available that uh, has amenities that the senior uh, community basically needs and they're they're looking for so we can provide a list of all of them too if that's helpful um, and then we'll provide all of our information as well if for any questions anything any follow-up conversations we would be happy to respond and then um, guide everybody through the process all right, looks like we have a question from the audience. Uh, audience. Um, is it more difficult to sell a 55 plus home? And do they appreciate at the same rate as the homes in the area? Actually, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Um, and especially uh, right now that uh, one of our offices in Stan and I, we actually go to Rancho Bernardo a lot. And there is a huge 55 plus community in Rancho Bernardo. Uh, believe it or not, they actually they are flying off the shelf. <laughs> like whatever becomes available, especially in this market, it's like a week at the most that you see that they stay listed. And then most of them actually they do like first agent represented open houses, and then they get offer right there, right? So to answer that question right now, the market is hot for every single home because there's no inventory. People are really not selling. And from appreciation wise, it's it's very similar to other homes, but I'm going to let Stan to kind of talk about that a little bit too. Stan, you want to add anything there? Yeah, it depends on which community, just like location, location, location. Some communities, uh, as she mentioned, fly off the shelves and you look at ocean hills country club which nearby where i live you know it's a gated community on a golf course has tons of activity and the values just keep going up and up and up i know an agent's been looking for a rental in that community for like three months now and there's just nothing coming available so certain areas will continue to increase in value just like the market in the past i think the, that was a great question and the fact that sometimes that's why the price points are more economical to get into it, depending on, if you go to like Vista Campana over an ocean side area, their price points have held down in some of them. And it depends on if they manufacture, they not manufacture, they older or newer, what's the situation? But let's face it, our population is getting older and older. And so we don't really consider ourselves at 55 plus to be seniors these days, you know what I mean? So that buyer pool, we're not dying off as fast, so the buyer pool is larger than it was a few years ago. And so it's, uh, I don't, I think it's still a great investment depending on the community that you're looking at. I and think demand, like to your point, right? Demand is going to be more yes. in the next few years. Yeah. Yeah. And Karen, I think you had your hand raised, didn't you? I did. This might be a little specific, but I had an inspector miss things in the past. So I'm curious, just for my knowledge, how, how do you determine things like, if if a water heater would need to be replaced before you buy a place like how would you determine the age of the water heater and, and forgive me for sounding ignorant but is is the age on there i mean how, how do you know that or is it just a visual well it's that's like it's very interesting that you said inspector missed a few points i mean they're like human yeah they have human errors here and there when they make it but it's not a good thing to miss but that's really why so one of the things that I do, and again, saying you can add here too, I like to get all of this information from the sellers when we are doing an inspection, right? They have all the documentation for their like appliances, the water heater, the age of the roof, if they change it, if it's original, if it's original, like 25 years now, you know, you might need to replace that, right? So having all of those documents collected ahead of time from the sellers, that's one of the things that I do. And also with the inspector like i am there with the inspector for six hours like going through every single thing i want to understand as a realtor what's what's happening what's working because i'm representing my buyer i am basically they put their trust in me to make sure we get the house that they want and everything is working in the working order if not then there's a plan to fix it to get credits or whatever it may be right so having both of those has helped me to kind of make sure that we minimize the risk of missing potential repair items. I hope the safety net, Karen, that I, I would highly recommend, and that is getting a home protection plan. Yeah. So on top of an inspection, get a home protection plan that's comprehensive mm -hmm. and, uh, and it covers a lot of those items. So if there's something unforeseen that does pop up, you have coverage through a reputable home protection company that will ensure your all your major appliances and infrastructure within the house. That's good advice. Guys, one more question. Is it common uh, to have the realtor walk around with the inspector? 
It is uh, common for, uh, I don't, I, I've seen it. I do it a lot in our office. Most of the realtors do it. Some people don't do it, but again, I, that's one of my things that I do. And I think Stan, you've seen it with a lot of realtors that do it, but again, it's not mandatory. It's not, you don't have to be there, but that's one of the things that you, I want to be there, like, because I want to avoid any issues that might uh, happen in the future. And I want to understand as they're going through, it's more of an educational thing for me too, Karen, honestly, like understanding how they check the roof, how they'd go up in the attic and stuff. I you just learn a new thing every day. I'm just, I'm just impressed. Okay. That you do that. <laughs> well, and Karen, I can tell you, uh, and Sharon probably doesn't want to say, but she goes above and beyond. So the truth is that a lot of agents will go out to an inspection the reality is they're sitting in the car, they're out on the phone, they're doing multitasking while they're there because it's a long time to be there. So they're not really even paying attention to what's going on. They're kind of there to guard the house, so to speak, for the seller. Yeah. So having an agent who engages and actually takes the time to walk through with the inspector, I think is really good. You as the consumer can also go in and that's the best bet is you as a consumer go around with the uh, uh, inspector. Some buyers don't want to do that. You know, they'll just, They'll hire somebody to do it and they'll look for the report. And, uh, and so that's uh, it. Well, I'd like to say that's the norm. They actually pay attention during the inspection. I I don't know what the percentage is, but I guess uh, Sharin is probably the exception, not the norm. Thank you. And I took back to that point. I highly recommend to all of my clients like buyers to, to be there with us because it's so important for them to understand their own home that they're going to live in, right? Like what the condition is. And sometimes there are folks that they don't even know how to like turn the water heater like in the garage on and off from the main line and all of that. So being there, asking those questions from an expert is a great opportunity. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much, Shireen, Stan, and everybody else that joined us. Uh, this was really helpful. I did learn a lot today. And then you can find this recording on our YouTube channel, as well as our website, villagecore.org. We'll have Shireen and Stan's contact information there as well. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you both for joining us, by the way. Yeah, it's, it makes it a whole lot easier. We actually have live people in front of us that we're talking to. So yeah. it's and being on camera. Yeah, too. <laughs> so it makes it more enjoyable. Awesome. So thank, thank you, you for having us. All thank right. You. Interesting. Bye. Bye. Bye.